very careful that the um, time doesn't get away from us because uh, I, I, I'm on a mission and Peter asked me to come up and do something in specific and so without any apologies I'm sure I'm going to do it and uh, even something Luke shared that really triggered it off that was so good you know that one day uh, when the, in Judges it was when they uh, when the, the enemy came and attacked and the first thing they did was, was shut down all the blacksmiths you recall mm-hmm. and so if they ever wanted something an instrument sharpened or then the enemy gave them could only do whatever the enemy dictated that they could do and, and the tragedy was that was, it was like that because there was no fire in Israel no fire in Israel. Now you don't have to be a rocket scientist to work out where that could go. It's said today that the church has lots of lovely fireplaces. Mm. Lots of lovely fireplaces. But where's the fire? But where's the fire? Anyway, I'm going to sing a little song. Well, I get the call from Peter, and I have a little song. <laughs> <laughs> and this one is particularly about this particular day, Pentecost. Here we go.
village where we lived yesterday. And just, just ask a few people who go to church and uh, ask them the question, uh, well, do you know what tomorrow is? Yes, yeah, Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> and some, well, I had some interesting comments. Uh, somebody said, yeah, it's all about, uh, uh, is it something that happened a, a little while after Easter? Yeah, that's pretty much right. But I just left it there. I didn't, no soapbox, just left it that. But before I get into this one, I want to just pick up on something Luke shared. It just quickened something in my heart. And thank you for it, Luke. It was beautiful. In Jeremiah 12, and this, if you ever want to know a reason, why did Jesus tell us to wait until we receive power? In Jeremiah 12, Luke, in, in verse 5, it says this. If you have run with the footmen, yes. and they weary you, yes. then how will you contend with horses? And if in the land of peace, in which you trust that they weary you, then how shall you do in loving of the joy? Mm. You know, if you think, if, you, if you're not doing too well in the good time, how are you going to, how are you going to go with COVID? Yes. Yeah, yes. Yes. And how are you going to go when other things happen that uh, take you out of your frame of reference and we're always comfortable with things we know because the things we know we generally believe we can handle them. But Jesus said to his disciples um, what's coming and what you're called to do there is no way yeah. can you do it without my, what we call the anointing and the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Now the strange thing about that I might may not get to this is that we find that so many Christians, I wrote this on the other day, it's so sad that probably predominantly church people have never ever even visited the upper room mm. in, in, in a way that they pressed in, yeah. even with tears, mm. to, to think of the things that God would want them to do. It's never been about it's always our prayer these days is this, Lord God, help me. Mm-hmm. The Holy Spirit waiting for us to say, Lord, use me. Yeah. Use me, Lord. Anyway, we know, we know, we know enough about Pentecost and that was a very special day for us. And, and sadly, in many churches, it, it, it might be recognised and acknowledged today, but they won't live in this day. Mm-hmm. It'll be back to business tomorrow. It'll be back to now that old song that says, "Room for business and room for pleasure, but for Christ, the crucified, there's not a place. Haven't got room for Him today." Pentecost Sunday was last week. Now it's mon- now it's Monday, and we get back to normal, whatever that might be. So many have never spent time in it. They, but the upper room, it, it's something I'm sure you, you know what I'm talking about when I say. It, People have never had that little visit in that secret, that sweet hour of prayer. They don't know anything of the glory and the pure joy of being in his presence. We don't hit the street just because we're going to teach them a lesson. We go to the joy of knowing that they can know. Mm. And an old song we sang years ago was, Everybody, we go because we believe everybody has a right to hear the best news going around. Jesus. We have to know Jesus is alive. So, Pentecost basically is just simply a Greek word for 50. And so, which, which all always falls in the line of it. One of three major feasts, I'm not going to go into that. But before Jesus was crucified, he told his, he told his disciples that the Holy Spirit would come. I've put so many messages to unconvinced people on when he comes. This is what it's going to be like when he comes. And uh, you pay a picture that's confirmed, the scripture confirmed, and, and you know the reality of it. And this is what Jesus said. That's not a drop. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another counsellor to be with you forever. Mm-hmm. The Spirit of Truth. Now the world cannot accept him, because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him, you know him, because he lives in you. Oh. Yeah. Isn't that wonderful? But you know him. He lives in you and will be in you. 
I will not leave you as orphans, I will come to you. That's from John 14, 15, 18. And, and we read, read on in that little chapter that everything was about to change because he was going to be with the Father. And so after 40 days after Jesus reckoned, 10 days after he ascended, the promise was fulfilled when Peter and the early church were in Jerusalem. And this is the message of Pentecost. I love this. What is the message of Pentecost, basically? The power to declare the wondrous works of God. Yes. So many people get caught up in the experience. It's a wonder they get so caught up in the experience. And I do. I love the experience. But I know what God has, what God has empowered me to do. You shall be my witnesses, he says. And so the message of Pentecost is the power to declare the wondrous words of God. You can't do that with a pretty fireplace. You have to have fire in it. You have to have that the fire, the fire of conviction, the, the, the fire of loyalty and fidelity, the power to declare the wondrous works, the power to witness. And a, but something else that the Holy Ghost, when He comes upon you, will give you this, and that's the courage to witness. Mm-hmm. A lot of people have the conviction they should, mm-hmm. but you need courage to go, to go out there, as another song or something, to go out there where the darkness runs. To go out there, there's so much pain, there's so, so many, much sorrow, and declare the wondrous works of God. And, and it's such a wonderful, that's what Pentecost, it, and the real contention is this, the desire to witness the wondrous works of God, but the real issue was to declare that Jesus was alive, and that the resurrection was a reality. What is our gospel? It's the resurrection of Christ. It is that all about Christ being raised from the dead and ascending to the Father and He's coming back again. That's what, our, that's what Pentecost is all about. Declaring and witnessing that the Holy Ghost has come and He's filled us. And I love that. that, that, that I mean, we, we can talk about Pentecostalism and all the other stuff. But look, it's not a religion. No. When, when the Holy Ghost fell on the day of Pentecost, there was only one church. Yes. Mm. The Pentecostal Church. <laughs> so that's that, that's it. We're well, okay there. It's not a doctrinal position. It's an experience with God. It's an experience that every believer can have. But I just want to digress for just a minute. I'm going to go. I'm going to go past that. Out into the, look what happens when people start to proclaim Jesus is alive. The resurrection is a reality, and we have been filled with the Holy Ghost and with power. What is the three, I can think of three things, I thought things on my up. Three things happened when they, they started to declare this. The first thing, we don't believe you. We don't believe you, we just believe you're drunks. Mm. Yeah, we just believe, we just, we, can't, we just don't like you, so how can we believe you? Look, you haven't even been to Bible college. So how can you start preaching about all these wonderful things and declaring these wonderful things? You're just hippies. How would you know? Because the Holy Ghost had taught them. The Holy Ghost had brought them into an experience and and an experience that all around them could not deny. It could not be denied. And so we're going on. But um, in Deuteronomy 4, I I trace this right back. I've spent weeks on this. is wonderful. And I looked at when Pentecost, it wasn't called Pentecost then, when, uh, and uh, there was a, a relative in the, in the Old Testament, and uh, the relative to Pentecost is called the Feast of Weeks. It's one of the three feasts concerning Thanksgiving and Harper. And anyway, the Feast of Weeks, uh, it talks about one of the things that after the harvest, they, the Lord had to burn off the stubble. They had to burn off that. But anyway, I want to get into this In Deuteronomy 4 24, God has always been a God of fire. Blood and fire. Send the fire. Blood of. Oh, we're going up there. Send the fire. But um, it says in Deuteronomy 4 24, for the Lord thy God is a consuming fire, <coughs> even a jealous God. I love that. And I thought, wow, that is brilliant. Then I thought of all these Old Testament illustrations about what happened. You know, look what happened in Sodom and Gomorrah. God was not happy. So what did he do? He sent the fire. 
If it, if it was a, a far of judgment, if you like, and we, don't, we should, a lot of people like to get off on that, but it just happened. That's how it was. That's what happens if you, if you upset the Lord. <laughs> but, uh, and then, I, I like the story in Judges with Gideon. He had this encounter with God. It all started with an encounter with God. And so the first thing he did is that anybody got an axe? And off he went and chopped down his dad's idol. The shearer made out of wood. He chopped him, he chopped him down and burned them. Fire. They were not happy. <laughs> <laughs> but he destroyed that idol. He was good. And, uh, and then, uh, then he had this Elisha where he sacrificed oxen on the, on the wood and stuff too as, as an offering to God. But I like that one about the, the demonstration of his awesome power. What about Shadrach, Meshach and the bit? The awesome demonstration of God's delivery power. He delivered them through fire. Through the fire, not the fire delivering them, but through the fire. If the fire kept, I like it. The fire kept burning. The fire didn't go out. But they came out untouched. The fire of oppression and death could know by any means harm them. But most importantly, in, in, in the Old Testament, fire was for sacrifice. The, any, if the sacrifices that God was pleased with, they were consumed. Mm-hmm. It's well pleasing to him. But what does it mean for us today, the fire for us? Well, it was unique. It's, there's no other mention of this, this occurring in the, Old, in the New Testament. It, and I asked myself, well, how come? Because it's still burning. It's still burning. It's burning in our hearts. It is burning in our hearts. It has, and what do I mean by that? Uh, only I that have been able to understand this is that it's the supernatural indwelling of the presence and power of God that comes upon a person when he believes in Jesus Christ. Notice I said comes upon them. Because John the Giver Jesus breathed into them and they received the Holy Spirit. Mm. But now the Holy Spirit comes upon them. Mm. Because there's chariots to run with and horses to contend with. And there's people and there's opposition to faith. And Jesus says, You can't do this without me. And and then Jesus said, I want you to all carry in Jerusalem and, and go back to Jerusalem and wait. And I, I like to think of that and subjectively that he, he, he told that to more than 120 people. Mm-hmm. I think he told that to a lot of people. And, uh, and I believe that in that process, it's like there is with all of us, you know, you didn't get to be the statue you are today that consistent. We had to learn some things. Mm-hmm. We had to learn to do without some things. Mm-hmm. We had to re- not only did we do without some things, we learned we had to learn how to renounce some things. Mm-hmm. There's never again on my list of things I, I desire or even things that I want to do. Some of things on the TV come up and, and uh, it looks a bit risky, I say to Jan, tell me when it's finished, you'll have but I've made a covenant with my eyes. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm not going to watch that in Jan or not or not and fix the channel for it's finished. But I have made a covenant with my eyes. I've made a covenant with my tongue. I've made a covenant with my whole life. Mm-hmm. I live under the new covenant of Jesus Christ and his precious blood, filled with the Holy Ghost. And so the Holy Spirit's power enables us to fulfil our calling and our purpose in life. If you want to, if you want to be effective, then seek God for this wonderful experience. Yeah. Yeah. You've got the fireplace, you want to put some fire in it. I hope so. Now anyway, back in the front. How am I doing? Yeah, do yeah. Acts 1. Now Acts 1, 14. Three things. After the sifting process. These, these all continued. They continued to wait. In one accord. That's unity. In prayer. And supplication. They never stopped to praying together. Pleading to God for what God wanted to do. They didn't know what God was going to do, but they knew it was going to be something good. They, they all nudging each other, praying God's up for something good. I, could see, I just know God's up for something good. I just know. And I love this. Because look, here was Mary, with Mary, the mother, the mother of Jesus, and with his brethren. So that every, every Roman Catholic should read this. Yes. Every Roman Catholic should read this. Mary was in the upper room and she was filled with the Holy Ghost. So perhaps you should think about it too. 
and, and his brothers and his brethren. Mm-hmm. His brethren, they just didn't think he was anything about him until after the resurrection. But all of a sudden, they, they saw, they saw, I've been living with the divinity all my life. I've been living with the, the creator of the universe all my life. And I probably punched him in the nose a few times. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But anyway, they were there as an opportunity to believe and receive power from the high. And why did, it, why did the Holy Ghost come? Not only because Jesus promised them, they were hungry. If you want, you know, if you want, what's the thing God wants you to have, you've got to be hungry for the thing God wants to give you. And they were thirsty for what Jesus said they would receive. I want to tell you today that there is a river. There is a river that flows from the throne of God. Whose streams make glad the city of God. Now, from that throne there's a river of living water, but out of the bottom is a fire, a river of fire. And that just that just touches him. His presence. Why do we need his presence? But his presence is power. It's his presence. As you go out and preach in his name and under his anointing and with his power, you will produce fruit. Amen. You will. You cannot but fail to produce fruit. But I want to tell you, you're going to produce more fruit with him with you than when you're just doing it in his name. Yeah. It's with him as, you're, as the Holy Spirit gives you that power to do that. It's his presence that produces seed to produce more fruit. Well, every bit of life is in the seed, is found in the seed. And then I look at it a little bit more, if you've got this, look at who was in this upper room. Let's look who was there. Well, we mentioned Mary, and we mentioned the brethren. And I believe that when we look at the who's who in that upper room, it highlights its significance. Well, there were 11 of the disciples. They would have been there. And there was Mary, the mother of Jesus. I'm not starting again, Mary. <laughs> I like that. And, uh, and he said, next to look, look who was there. We've got to highlight something. There was uh, 11 of his disciples. There was Mary, the mother of Jesus. And this is, this is the one I like, Pete. I believe also in that room were two men. Two persons, anyway, who were on their way to a mm-hmm. Yes. And they met the master. And they listened about to and hurried back to the room and say, He's alive! He's real! I've met him! I've seen the Nazareth! I've heard his voice! I've walked with him! I've talked with him! They were actually convinced of the resurrection. They were there. They were there. So, Pentecost Sunday is wonderful. But Pentecost has always been about the power to witness in such a way to produce a harvest. It's always been about witnessing the power to witness. I don't know, somewhere in this in the whole range of things, that, that point gets lost. Because Jesus told his disciples to go, go out into the world, but the modern day church seems to say, come. Yes. And yet Jesus said to go. And, and I think that's it. But I love the, I, I love the way that it happened, that they, they had received power to witness in such a way as to produce what Jesus to produce a harvest. I want to get back to the Shiloh one in a minute, but that was interesting. But to love the way we were made to, the baptism does that for you, because you are filled with the love of God in that way. And Pentecost was the day of encounter. That was the day when the Christian. A lot of people say, say that's the church's birthday. I rather think the empty tomb was the day of Jesus' birthday. But that's just when they start to find the pub over, you know. <laughs> but it was a day of encounter. I believe it was a day when all the things are different. Now, every true Pentecostal, of, of which I'm proud to be one of he preached this verse. And then, when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were there with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them clothed tongues as a fire, and it sat upon each one. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. All filled. 
with the heart and began to speak with other tongues. Now that's another lifestyle of discussion, isn't it? As the Spirit gave them utterance. I like the word suddenly. I just like that word suddenly in there. It happened suddenly. You know what I like about it happening suddenly? The devil couldn't do anything about it. He did it. <laughs> it happened suddenly. And the devil could not do anything about it. And the moment they, they started to speak in other tongues, he was lost. It lost his hand. He didn't have a clue. I know they were glorifying God. And they were praising God. But he said, what's that? What's that? What's that? The moment they, the Holy Ghost fell, he knew he'd got that battle. Look, 2020 was pretty... It was just a high agents, let's face it. It wasn't a good year. I thought it was alright. But then again, a lot of people had lots of tragedies and lots of lives have been lost. And lots of, but this, with this, having said that, lots of things have been exposed too. Mm-hmm. And lots of the conditions of men's hearts have been very good. And uh, one thing more than ever that I've like discovered is that God, this world is a powerful God. Mm-hmm. And he's enticing them away with every element he had in his disposal to take us away from the truth of God's word. And uh, like I said before, when they are filled with the Holy Ghost and went out, they there was disputes and there's questioning. That's what the media does all the time. You know, questions everything about us and uh, it targets influential Christian people all around the world and sets them up to like when Nehemiah went to build the wall. One of the great, the great opposition had was ridicule. Mm-hmm. And, and, they, and they set us up as gooses. Mm-hmm. I think Jesus called it lamb, sheep for the slaughter. But <laughs> no, that's how they do it. But there's going to be some troubles in our life that are good. But I believe this is the year of favour and restoration if we hold fast to the confession of our faith. There's going to be some troubles and, and nothing will stop them. Well, the good news is that you can have that same Holy Spirit today mm. as they have. Mm. You can have the same experience that they have. Now, so many of us as Christians have been conditioned to say, no, that's not for today. Mm. So many of us have been conditioned by people who, um, because you know, they are well learned men, they want you to be referring to them as well learned men, and often are asking the Holy Ghost of this. You know, Abraham. Now he believes God and his faith is accounted to him, his righteousness. And so often Jan lies, when we're confronted with an issue we say, what does the scripture say? Yeah. Yeah. What does the scripture say? Yeah. I have lots of opinions about what could yeah. and what could, but the Holy Ghost will always come to you and he will always give you the answer. Whether you want that answer or not, you know, sometimes say to anybody else. But no, but you always have your answer from him. And Jesus promised us that that it would be to our advantage that he would that he would come and that he would leave us but not alone. Jesus, I'm going to do our communion around that little bit. But we um, the comforter would come. Well the good news is the comforter has come. The comforter has come. Oh spread the joyful sound wherever men may but the Holy Ghost, the comforter has come. And I want to just make this statement now that with the Holy Ghost in your life, baptizing you and, and, and filling you and coming upon you, you can do more in one day with the Holy Ghost self than you can do with it in a year without not proving that. But when you come and empowers the possibilities are endless. Mm. They're endless. Look, don't even try to imagine what they are. Just let him tell you what they are. Let him show you what they are. Now, let's just quickly do this. Earlier I mentioned in the Old Testament, there's always a relative in the Old Testament that every principle in the New Testament has got a relative in the Old Testament. Mm-hmm. First mention is generally a principle that applied can be applied to. But earlier I mentioned that Feast of Weeks is called Shavuot. It's a, a Feast of Weeks, the wave offering. And, and it's, a celebra- it's actually a celebration of the harvest. It was one of the three celebrations that, that came. This one started before Passover, then there was Passover, and then there's the Thanksgiving. That's where Jesus, on the great day of the feast, was this feast talking about, the great feast. And, they, and this, this feast was all about the gathering of grain. The Shavuot, they put all their efforts into making sure 
that they got as much as they could gather. But in Leviticus they were commanded, yeah, you get as much as you can, but you make sure you leave the corn and don't cut. And and what? Because that seed for somebody else to sow, or to to feed, whatever. But the seed then become their responsibility, not yours. Our responsibility was to make sure we left that seed for them. Uh, a lot of people think that's some sort of charity. No, that is seed. Every seed will grow. Every seed will grow. And but they, they were commanded to leave the corn to the bleed. But without the baptism of the Holy Spirit, the harvest that we are commanded to gather is going to be very poor indeed, mm. compared to what the Holy Spirit had in mind when Jesus said to that woman of the world, look, look, sister. Look at the field white and the harvest that the labourers have here. Mm-hmm. But I would rather think that he's lying over I'm going to take care of that. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I'm going to take care of that. Mm-hmm. I'm, going to send the, I'm going to send somebody who's going to maybe fix you up in such a way that it will compel you to go. He's not going to make you go. He will never make you go. But, he will you can, but you'll, his love for him will compel you to go. And so without that baptism, the harvest will be with, because we have nothing to give outside of ourselves. Without the, the Holy Spirit's help, we have nothing to give. We can we can make good overtures socially, and we can do all sorts of things in the name of Jesus, and they will make a difference. But nothing but the, not but the empowerment of the Holy Spirit will have. I mean, could you imagine? This is God. This is God. And you see a child right there and he has an impediment of some sort. And the Holy Spirit says, tell him to be healed in Jesus' name. The kid gets, the kid, the kid gets healed. Because the Lord, the, Lord, the, Lord, the Lord did not want to receive that. Yeah. Now, but that little boy would be happy. Mm-hmm. He would be delighted that somebody cared enough to be obedient to the Word of God. Mm-hmm. And did that. That's the sort of, I'm just writing that past you. Yeah. <laughs> but what I'm really saying is, without him, we have nothing to give. What's that old song say, this evening? We know all these old sound mm-hmm. songs. Mm-hmm. Nothing in my hands I bring. Simply to the cross I believe. Yeah. Just come. Yeah. Only he saves. And only he fills. Well, how about communion, hey? And I want to take our communion today from John 14. And in some ways, it's sad that the verses 1 and 2 of this, this, or 3 of this scripture, the only time we ever hear them is a funeral. Mm. And it's not meant for funeral. Mm. Jesus was, you know, true, Jesus was going to a funeral, but he was going to come back. Mm. <laughs> and it says this in John 14 1. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, I believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I'd go to prepare a place. Now, yeah, brother, Fred is with the Lord, and he's in that mansion. Mm-hmm. But Jesus went on to say, uh, You can't come. Where I'm going, you can't come. And if I go and I prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, then you may be also. Jesus was in fact saying, look boys, you can't come with me this time. I'm going on a journey that you can't come on. And the journey I'm going on is because the Father asked me to. And he had you in mind when he asked me to make that journey. But first of all, before I go to get this mansion ready for you, I've got to go to a place called Calvary. I've got to go to a, a, a grave, a tomb that I don't even own. But after I've been on that little journey, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come again, I'm going to go to the Father. And then I can come to you. Mm. And then you can come. But the first night of this transitional journey is, I have to be died alone for you and I. And he said, this is why the whole purpose, and John would have written his words, and years later he wrote these words. I love them. For this purpose, that the Son of God made manifest that he might declare the 
wondrous works of God, glory to God, glory to God. So, back in Shavuot, they presented their bricks to the heart. We are still present a harvest to Jesus. But I want to take up the thought today about bread. Mm-hmm. That the bread that we're going to partake on, are you going to do it, give it out to the reserve? Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, that the bread that we have, and we've taken a, 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 I want to encourage you this morning, when, uh, when we take the bread in the Bible, simply don't leave anything on the table that Jesus wanted you to have. Don't leave anything on the table that Jesus wants you to have. Mm-hmm. Now, everything is on the table. Mm-hmm. The living bread, mm-hmm. but by His stripes we were healed. Mm-hmm. It's by the living bread we can receive natural bread. We, we receive, everything we cut, we have, mm-hmm. we receive from the Father. I don't know, I get a little bit carried away sometimes, but I, I think as we partake of this bread together, something supernatural can happen. Yeah. Because this is living bread. Yeah. And he is alive forevermore. Forevermore. It's living bread. And, uh, and as we take the cup, I, I like to think to myself, thank you. I think, hey, this isn't just wine. This is new wine. This is the new wine of the New Testament, the cup of new covenant, a new wine. A, everything about it says Hebrew, everything about this living bread and this wine is better. Better promises. Better covenant. A better life for you and I. All the covenant of bread and the blood of Jesus. And I love this old song, we're not going to sing it, because it says, I want the new wine. Pentecost Sunday. I want the new one. The heavenly one. Coming down from the Father of life. It'll make you laugh. It'll make you cry. It might even make you dance all night. It's the Holy Ghost and fire. One that satisfies. Or fill me up right to the brew with this new, new one. It's that feeling and the empowering which I believe we all desperately need. Mm. Um, but then the, uh, our heart's desire is such that I need it, I want it, I can receive it. Oh, but I haven't heard that this is all good. You haven't heard it correctly. What says the scripture? Peter was very quick to convince these people that this self-same Jesus who you crucified has become Prince and Saviour. And it wasn't a bad little statement because 3,000 got saved. That's not a bad little letter. But back to the bread. You know, supernaturally, a little piece of bread, not much bigger than this, fed a thousand people. Why? Because the Lord blessed it. He turned it into something natural, into something supernatural. You want to know why, why I love Pentecost and preaching about Pentecost? Because it changes me. Yes. I am a new creation in Christ Jesus. But I like that it like this. When a newborn baby is born, it's perfect. Prayerfully, hopefully, it's perfect. But don't go asking it to take the wood out. Don't go ask it to do this or that because it's perfect as it is it it yet doesn't have the maturity or the strength to do the things that another person in development would. So it talks about us being changed and as I take the bread I know even now I am being changed that I can can do the things that God has called me to do. But some old charismatic dude said years ago you know, as I take this bread and this cup, I know that I can be the kind of person Jesus wants me to be. Because he made me brand new. A young man at church, I thought the other day, he tried to take his life seven times. And he had what you might call a Damascus Road experience. And we've all got the Lord saying, what do you think you're doing? 
Your life doesn't belong to you. Amen. You have no right to do that. Your life doesn't belong to you. Any of those people down the wall carrying on, you have, if you belong to Christ, you have no right to do that. You, you, you just, you know, the world is not your home if you're a Christian. I mean, this body belongs to Jesus. Yeah. Everything about it is now belonging to the Lord. Anyway, Peter, would you like to give thanks for the, yeah. the bread and the cup, or I'll just keep going on and on. Father, we thank you that you supply everything we need. Amen. You are the creator of heaven and earth, and all the bountiful things that occur within your creation. Lord, you simply say to be filled with the Spirit. Yeah. Teach that. Sing mm-hmm. yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Yeah. Singing and making melody yeah. in the heart of the Lord. Lord, your word is perfect. Your living word, mm-hmm. the bread of life, mm-hmm. is for us today. Mm-hmm. And so, Lord, as we, we take these emblems, the bread and the cup, the new wine Amen. gives us strength this day to declare the wonderful works of God. Amen. We thank you now for your presence mm-hmm. and for your word this morning. Amen. 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 And while we just while we take it, it's like that. Mm-hmm. Fill my cup, Lord. I lift it up, Lord. Come and quench the setting of my soul. Bread of heaven, feed me to the Lord.
Are you going to do it, Larissa, or shall I? Oh, yes. You'll do it? Okay, so it's a little. Oh, you yes. can. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. We just have to uh, remind you, this Tuesday night, uh, we won't be having a meeting, uh, because uh, Wednesday we've got the day of stay uh, meeting at the Baptist Church, so that'll be uh, worthwhile. And uh, Dale has, uh, has done a lot of the sending out the gospel through the radio waves. And uh, I just want to say thank you, Robbie, for this morning. Oh, I love it. Thank you. And uh, it's really precious. Uh, and, uh, you know, the thing is, we can lay the table and God will send the people in yeah. to have the food mm. from it. There is, a, there is a famine of the word out there mm. at the moment. Amen. Really but right. there is a, a people that God is raising up. Mm. We had two young men, uh, and uh, with Mary Fraser, we were at the corner of uh, King William Street and Rundle Mall. And uh, the, the idea of these two young men were to uh, test her and uh, uh, finding out that she was preaching the gospel that was true. Oh, yeah. and, uh, and so, and so uh, they said, good. Mary said, we've come from Melbourne and we come over here. We are street preachers. And so they said, now we know that you're here preaching up here. We're going to go down the other room and preach down there. So there are, God is calling people to do that. Mm. Uh, and uh, you know that that was a tremendous boost. Mm. Uh, Mary passed the test, by the way. <laughs> and, uh, and they came back later in the day, and, and they were saying how wonderful it was yeah. that they could meet other people. Yeah. And they were sort of uh, Indian or Asian type of people, and uh, we thought they were sort of going to. And the same them. response you and Luke and those people got was exactly the ones that they got when they left their room. Yeah. 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 Mm. 
that's it. You can't you got, uh, the question. What was the yeah. Just before we to bring the question up, do we have that one we feel with the spirit? Speak to yourself and yeah. pass and hear yourself. Yeah. Because really, there's something we can have every day. Keep, yeah. You know, be filled with it, is keep on being filled. Continually. Yeah. Continually. Yeah. Continually. Yeah. 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 You feel with it. I didn't come to it. I didn't come to it. I didn't come to it. Thank <laughs> you. 